Amen. Church, are you guys excited to hear the word of God? Now, I love that God just orchestrates the services. God just put it together for us on the platter just to enjoy the message of the word. Now, I'm going to just get right into it. Is that okay? Can I? But y'all didn't want to hear the word of God. Amen. Turn to Revelation chapter 2. Now, I said that God put the service together. That was confirmation by the Spirit. What I'm about to share with the family, it is to the family. Revelation chapter 2. Now, in verse 7, the Bible says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, the one who is victorious. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And the church said, you may be seated. The title for the lesson is The Darkest Hour. Now, as we, we know disciples, we don't live in the darkness. So the darkest hour is the brightest hour. Now, family, I want the, the thoughts in your head not to speak louder than the words of God. The Bible says, open up your ears. And hear what the Spirit has to say. Open up your ears. There is no other option. We need to be victorious. I want to go and eat from the paradise for the tree of life. I want to be restored back to my original form. In the presence of God. In the garden of Eden. And family, I, I want to fight. I want to overcome. Darkness will not overcome us. We will fight. I will fight in the front lines of sacrifice. I will build the kingdom of God. And I will fight for the future of our children. Where else can we go? Where else can our children go to find the, the, the tree of life? Where else can they go and find refuge from the world? There is no other place but the kingdom of God. You know, sometimes they say that old school is best, amen. I'm not talking about the platters, the temptations. I'm talking about the Bible, amen. That's been old. That's, the Bible's been around way longer than you have. You may be in your 60s, pushing your 70s, but the Bible's been around for way longer than you, amen. So don't, don't feel old. The Bible can renew you too, amen. Now, I don't usually preach about movies, but this one just got me all kinds of fired up. Now, I was watching the movie of the Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Now, there is a moment in the scene when he's sitting in complete and utter darkness. He has the weight of the shoulder of the world on his shoulders. He's feeling the immense pressure of the Germans advancing against the United Kingdom. And he's sitting in darkness as his wife comes into the room and turns on the lights. Praise God for our wives, amen. And she comes to her husband and she says, my darling, you have the full weight of the world in your shoulders. The inner battles have actually trained you for this very moment. You are strong. Because you are imperfect. I mean, that got me fired up, amen. And then Winston Churchill goes after this, and the king comes to his room the same time as his wife just encouraged him, and the king is like, I'm with you 100%. And then Winston Churchill is heading to give the speech of his life, and then he goes to the streets. He takes public transportation. And on the public transportation, the people kind of huddle around him. And he asked them, you the people, what is your mood? Is it confidence? Barry, they all said. If the enemy comes to our streets, what would you do? They all said, we will fight. 
Would you want a peace treaty with the enemy? They all said never. Now, family, I, I wonder if the Spirit of God were to walk around the disciples and ask you, what is your mood? What is your confidence? What will you say? If God were to ask the West Super Region, what is your confidence? What will you say? What about the North Super Region? What about the Central Super Region? Do you guys have confidence in God? That in the darkest hour, God's light shines brighter. There are men in history just like him, church and wisdom, that did great things for the world. You have Achilles, known as the greatest warrior of all time. You have Alexander the Great who conquered the known world all the way to India. You have Julius Caesar who conquered all the way to the north. He conquered the ghouls, a place that no one had conquered before. But there is no one like Jesus. As man conquered for greed, Jesus conquered for love. You only want to hear the word of God. First John 4.4 4 says, because the one who is with you, it is greater than the one that is in the world. There is no one greater than Jesus. Point number one, empowered in the darkest hour. Now, open up your Bibles to Mark 15. I said God orchestrated the service. Now, we're going to look at the account of the actual death of Jesus. Verse 33. The Bible says that at noon, darkness came all over the whole land until three in the afternoon. You see, family, this darkness wasn't from a majestic eclipse. This darkness was from God himself. God wanted to make it 100% clear that this is from me. And God had an incredible moment with Jesus. Darkness came, but light will follow. God wanted to make it 100% clear to you that when darkness comes, Jesus comes. If there is darkness, it's because the light of God has not done yet. Now, to fully understand the scripture, you got to understand what Jesus is going through. Now, we all understand that what separates us from God himself is sin. We all feel the separation when you fall into sin, the, the feeling in your stomach of the separation between you and God. You, you sense that. Your prayers don't make it to heaven. When someone sins against you, you, you sense the separation between you and that brother or sister. Now, think about Jesus, who is being separated from God himself, not because he sinned, but because he took your sin. Verse 34. The Bible says... And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Elo, Elo, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you imagine the pain that Jesus is feeling at this very moment? He took all the sin of all the world, of all time, all upon himself, in this very moment, and him himself becoming sin. Can you imagine the pain of the separation between him and God? And that's why he cried in a loud voice. In the 21st century, I wonder if you can hear the voice of Jesus still. I wonder, family, if the, if the cry of Jesus on the cross can still be heard by you on the cross that Jesus died for you. I don't know why people like to hear my stories when I was a little kid, but I'll tell you a story. But y'all don't want to hear the word of God, amen? When I was a seven, 10-year-old, 
We did things that I don't know what we did, but rather just the inclination of our hearts was evil. Uh, around 2, 3 in the morning, we waited for everyone to go to sleep. And some of you guys know this story, but I find it compelling to share it. We waited for everyone to go to sleep. All, me and all my cousins got up in the middle of the night. Now, we lived in a house of two stories tall, and we went to the second floor and grabbed the cage with an iguana inside. We grabbed the cage, and then my cousin says, I got to go and grab the two-liter bottle of alcohol. And don't forget the matches. So we grab the cage, and, and we're going and living outside of the house, trying not to make any noise. We walk across another park. And as we get to the park, he puts the cage down and grabs the bottle. He opens the bottle up and starts to pour it all over the animal. And as he pours the bottle over the animal, he says, hand me the matches. He throws a match on top of the cage. I've never seen an animal run so fast in my life. And the smell, even to this day, I can still smell that smell. Now, family, we, some of us have the audacity to look at the cross, look at the sacrifice, and not be moved by it any longer. Wow. Don't you realize that you also participated into his death? You're the one that let the match go. If the, the cross of Jesus doesn't move us, what can really move you? Verse 37. The Bible says, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Now, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. God wanted to make it absolutely clear that his presence was going to go to all the world. This was not a tearing from man. This was a tearing from God. Why? Because it was from the top to the bottom. This, this is a huge curtain, family. This is like 60 feet tall, four inches thick. God was indicating that my presence will no longer dwell in buildings made by men. But rather, the Spirit of God will be the people in this room. Now, family, I wonder... If the temple that God has given you, the responsibility that God has given you, if you are torn or you are still still. You are either the temple that holds the spirit or you're the temple that lets him go and do great things for the kingdom. Now, family, how can the light dawn in your ministry? How can the light of God reign you have to die. Darkness will never leave you if you don't die. If there is darkness in your marriage, you got to die. If there is darkness in your ministry, you got to die. If your ministry isn't where it needs to be, then you got to die. If there is no light, God does not reside. The need of the hours family is really to be to receive the calling that Danny gave all of us is to raise up leaders. Leaders that fight for the kingdom of God. Leaders that stand between the gap of the living and the dead. Verse 39. I'm trying to preach, my brother. I'm coming. <laughs> Verse 39 says, And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus he saw how he died, and he said, surely, this man was the son of God. Amen. Well, why did he say this? Because he witnessed the darkness that came over all the land, and then he saw it disappear. Some of you guys would like it the other way around. Some of you guys would have liked that when Jesus died, darkness came over the land. But not so. When Jesus died, the light returned into the world. For those times, as he was died, right before he died, three hours, it was complete and utter darkness from God. It was God who wanted to make it clear that when you die, when Jesus died, 
light will come. I don't have time. I got to give you my second point real brief. Amen. Point number two, the hour to remember. Joshua chapter 10. Joshua 10, verse 6. Y'all didn't want to hear the word of God. You're too quiet for me. You know, at church, you can have fun. I mean, this is the place to be, family. Joshua 10, verse 6. Let me give you a little context. Joshua is marching into battle against five kings. Verse 6, he says, The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgah. Do not abandon your servants. Come up quickly and save us. Help us because the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. The Gibeonites rightly look towards the people of God for help as protectors. You can't be too proud to ask for spiritual help. Why not ask it from the people of God themselves? Don't be limited by your pride that you're too proud to beg. Now, the men of God come righteously to the help. They, verse 7, let's find out what happened. I don't got time. We just got to go. Now, verse 7 says, so Joshua marched off from Gilgah, his entire army, including the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. No one will be able to stand against you. After an all-night march from Gilgah, Joshua took them by surprise. Family, this was a whole family event. No one left behind. Everybody's marching together. Everybody's going. Now, Gilgah actually means a wheel churning. Gilgah it's a place mentioned as a memorial place. It's a place of radical obedience. It's a place where the reproach was removed. It is a place of obedience and remembrance of salvation. This is the very place where the manna of God stopped coming. In order to get to Gilga, you got to march all night. Family, we got to get the conviction that all night prayers aren't just Something we do for fun. We don't just wake up and say, well, I want to go to an all-night prayer because I just want to do this. For no, no, no. This is where we march towards the battle. All nights. This has got to be a conviction for the singles. Amen. Why is this only a conviction for the campus students? That before they go into battle, they got to march all nights. This got to be a conviction for the singles, amen? Can I get any singles, amen? We got to march before we get into battle. How are your wheels? Do you have Mario Kart wheels where they're tiny? You have a hard time rolling, getting where you need to be because it takes you longer, amen? Or do you only have the wheels that is for off-roading. You only come around when it's fun, you wanna just enjoy it and all the good things and, and that's what gets you going. Or do you have the all-terrain wheels? <laughs> that you are involved no matter the occasion, the situation, but you're willing to go anywhere, anytime. Family, why towards Gilga? Because it's where the wheel gets going. We got to roll the ball. We got to get there together, family. We got to roll the ball together. All night prayers get the ball rolling. Oh, the, 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 the all night prayers just get God active. Sometimes the all night prayer is for God to get you active. Last time I checked, God is ready to go. God is active. God ain't waiting for you. What strength can you give to God? What wisdom can you give to God? What motivation can you give to God? God is waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Now, how does the Lord work for us if we march all night? Well, verse 10, this is an epic battle. Let's should make a movie out of this. Verse 10, the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. Verse 11, 
as they fled from Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Asika, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them. And more of them died from the hail than were killed by the source of the Israelites. Family, our night prayer, what's the conviction? God can do more than you. God can do more than you. Last time I checked, Isaiah 48, 28 says, Don't you know, have you not heard that the Lord is everlasting? That he will not grow tired. Why wouldn't we go to that source? Why wouldn't we go to a God who doesn't get tired? Why don't we go to that God together as a family? The spirit within us is wanting to go, wanting to march, but we let it down. It will hold the spirit back. God can do more than you. Can I get an amen to that? Verse 12. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I just got to pull on the mark. Gospel. He was just running through the whole gospel. Verse 12 says, Now, on that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of all Israel, Son, still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Aichlon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jashar, the sun stood in the middle of the sky and delayed going down a full day. There has never been a day like it before. There will never be a day like this again. Surely the Lord was fighting for his people. You see, family, Joshua's problem, he was running out of time. I need more time, God. I'm trying to do your work. They're, They're running away. And I need more time. That was his battle. We must always keep our spiritual eyes open in the spiritual conditions. My family, it's kind of, can I be honest? It's really scary how relaxed some of you guys are. You're not moved by anything. You're just sitting and frozen Fighting your own sin? What? Last time I checked, the Israelites fought in the day. Why are you fighting in darkness? Why are you spending more time fighting the darkness than fighting in the light? You're so focused in your own battles, your own fight against sin. And God says, man, I just wish you would just pray the impossible prayers. Don't you realize that the son that was standing still was Jesus? Nothing will move him. He is the light that always gives. He is the light that will remain. He is the light that we all need. Then verse 15. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Praise God for victories. Amen. Amen. So family, don't forget. We need to be empowered in the darkest hour. Don't forget that the hour to remember is to remember that our prayers make a difference. Let us not forget what Jesus has done for us. Don't forget to look at the cross and look at the darkness that came. If you die, surely God will reign. And in closing, family, I want to give you guys a challenge. The all night prayers, we are marching towards the city. What have you been marching for? Family, I want to fight to build the kingdom of God. Why don't we dream together? Why don't we dream that perhaps Danny's son one day or daughter one day will disappear your daughter? Why don't we dream that Fabian's son will one day disciple my son? Why don't we dream that your sons one day can be used by God to go around the world? Why don't we dream together? And why don't we fight in the light rather than fight against darkness and to God be all the glory?